Scene one, Apple, take one. Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the content creator panel. If you missed the last episode, go watch that to catch up. And now part two of the panel from the Miracle Makers International Film Festival. So anything from anyone before we move on to the next trailer? Okay, we are gonna have some Q&A time at the end as well, so we can always do that. So uh, Radomir, if you can play the climb on trailer, please. And I keep running back because it's nice to see this on the big screen. <laughs> We slept on last night. And I'll keep holding on. I'll keep holding on to you. Mike's still on? Great. Thank you, up in the booth. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the health and wellness and the kind of operating systems that I mentioned. And one of the things that's really important for everyone to remember when they're making stuff is filmmaking is both a science and an art. One of the things that I use as a coach is try to get people out of the, what I call the tyranny of or. We all feel like we have to make choices between things. You know, is it gonna be, love or money, is it family or career, is it this or that? And a lot of times, it's 
figuring out how to move to an and. You know, how can I have the love of my life and a great career? You know, how can I do art and pay my bills? How can I be a writer and director and producer or what have you? How can I have great pre-production and production and good post? One of the things I mentioned earlier is getting these different systems online for you and saying like, oh, how can I listen to my head and be able to sit down and practice doing paperwork. If you don't know how to do that stuff, hire an AD, hire a producer, hire a UPM, have them teach you how to do it. It's a great discipline to have. But don't let that keep you in your head. You have to have that vision and artistic sense, the thing that inspires you, the thing that gets you up and says, it's day 26 and I'm still excited to go to set instead of, I can't wait for this production to be over. Who is making me do this? Oh, I am, it's my production. <laughs> in the larger scope of things, you can put whatever label you want on this, but if it's your set, you need to coach or teach or lead or mentor everyone. You need to be able to so show up as your best self so everyone's inspired and wants to do their best for you and the project. And again, a lot of this is being open and honest with yourself and saying, do I have a communication problem or an anger management problem or any other kind of problem that I need to address between now and my next production so that I can be better, so that I can show up, so I'm hacking my sleep or my diet or my fitness or my whatever, so I have the physical ability, the mental ability, and the emotional ability to show up well and to show up every single day. And sometimes if you have to go scream at a pillow, like there's a time and place to just get it out. You know, sometimes you're just tired and you're like, well, I had a cup of coffee and I'm not, great. Just figure out the solutions. But if you're not noticing those things or you're getting the same feedback, production to production to production, oh, they're a genius, but they're an asshole. You know, we all know people in the industry who's like, they're so talented and they're so hard to work with. Sometimes there is an or. But again, what are we learning from those people? Like, oh, I don't want to be like that. It doesn't make me feel good to have to yell at my crew or to have to try and convince somebody to not quit. We want to be like, I love working with you. Let's work together again. If all you're doing is paying attention to the external, if you're not paying any attention to this internal, it's really in a one-way conversation. When people say conversation is a two-way street, this is one of my coaching things, they usually mean, oh, we are talking to and listening to each other. And that's part of it. The other part of it is this internal conversation with yourself. What's this inner dialogue that I have? Am I telling myself I'm not good enough? Am I telling myself I'm right and everyone else is wrong? Like, what are you saying? Are you listening to that? And when you hear yourself, you know, quite often people say, oh, I never talk to other people the way I talk to myself. I'm like, well, why are you talking to yourself that way? If you're not noticing it, how can you start to notice that? So that way you can say, oh, I don't want to talk to my crew like that anymore. Or, I don't want to like be the biggest fan ever of my actors and then abuse my crew. How about you just be the biggest fan of everybody, including yourself? Are you constantly having the same emotional reaction coming up? I talk to a lot of creative people and they're basically having panic attacks right before they step on set or come up from behind the curtain or whatever it is. And some people need that switch of just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and as soon as they're on stage, they're fine. But some people can't get past that. And then they can't deliver because whatever it is is holding them back. So processing some of that is important. And sometimes we need to just hire a good camera guy and be like, I'm not going to do the camera stuff. You do it. Or we need to hire someone to teach us the camera stuff because we want to do it. All this emotional stuff is very similar. You might need a coach. You might need a therapist. You might need a sensei. You might need somebody to help you process and get all this stuff out. So that way you're not just carrying it and dumping it all over everyone that you're on set with. Part of that is, as I mentioned, getting these three different systems online. Some people are very emotional. They either pick up on other people's emotions. This would be great for an actor. You're able to feel the energy from the other performer. You're, or if you're doing live stuff, you're getting it from the audience. It fuels you. But sometimes those people are just destroyed afterwards because they gave everything and they have nothing left. And it's really hard. It takes a long time to recover. 
other people, as I mentioned, they're burying their head. Now, those are great for certain roles. You want a DP who's like, oh, I have all this in my head. Oh, great, excellent. I need a mathematician DP. But again, a lot of cinematography is art. You also need someone who can just say, oh, you know what would be an amazing shot? They have to have that creativity as well. So again, the and. How can I have someone who's really good? They know exactly the lenses. They know exactly the focus. They know exactly all the things. And they can elevate your vision by bringing their vision into tag team. And you go, oh, our vision together is so much better than the plan that I had. I'm a big fan of Robert Rodriguez. And one of the things he said is, I love when people bring me a problem on set. Because I know I'm going to have to invent a solution. And he goes, and almost always it's better. Because if I end up in post and I go, oh, this is exactly what a year ago I pictured in my head, he goes, then I failed because it didn't get any better. It's just, I had a plan and the plan happened. Because it's always better if you say, I had a plan, we had a problem, and we go, oh, this is so much better. Thank God for the problem. Because now I look back and go, I'm sure you've heard the term happy accident. There's a lot of happy accidents in lesbian western. We shot that with no sticks, no light. It was a camera, three lenses, a boom pole connected to the camera, a bounce, and a steady camera, and that was it. We shot 30, 27 pages in four days. Because we did rehearsal, we did the stunt training, we did all that stuff ahead of time. So we were able to just go in and say, we're gonna shoot from first light, we have two night scenes, we're just gonna candle the hell out of this, and then we'll wrap every day on time. So it's about, again, stepping out. How can we take all of these different parts, getting production to seamlessly run together, having all those roles work together, have all these different operating systems in ourselves and others. Sometimes this is just learning how to read people and go, this person needs yes, no answers. This person needs, especially a lot of actors, they're like, what's my motivation? Well, okay, so we need 10 minutes to talk this out. They need to understand, they need backstory, they need all this stuff. The, the lighting people just know, where do you want the lights? Here, here, high, low, thank you. They don't need to go, well, the reason the light, <laughs> you need to know, how do I talk to the different people? How can I learn how to shift in and out of these different ways of communicating so everybody hears what they need to hear and they understand what they need to understand? How can I remind myself, like, so when I'm going to do my welcome to set today, I'm not going to ramble on for an hour, an hour behind. I'm going to go, thanks for everyone to be here. If anyone needs any help, let me know. I'm going to have a camera meeting. And then while they're setting up, we're going to have an actor prep. I need everybody to do the whatever. Thank you. Because that's what the purpose of the director's briefing, that's what you need to do. And then you don't need to act like that again probably that day. But that's how you do that role. If you get stuck in that role, then you may not be doing all these different aspects of production throughout the day or throughout the shoot well. So part of this is also getting, again, really honest. Like, what am I good at? What am I not good at? Where can I improve? How can I start to learn how to keep the director hat on, but say, I need to clear the set. Everybody take a break because I need to talk about actor down or up. Instead of, uh, just pause for a minute. I'm going to step up and whisper in the ear because I don't need clear set. I just need 30 seconds. Both of those things can work, but you need to know what do they need so I can get what I need. If you handle every problem the one way, you're only going to get the ones so that's like the old hammer analogy. I always like to turn that in its head literally. Everyone says, if you approach every problem, you know, if all you have is a hammer, you're going to hammer everything like it's a nail. But remember, a hammer can do completely opposite things. It can hammer stuff in, and you can turn it around, and it can take things out. So there's nothing wrong with being a hammer if you remember, oh, sometimes I need to put stuff in, and sometimes I need to take stuff out. Sometimes I need to do opposite things. A hammer just doesn't serve one function. It serves two completely opposite functions. And sometimes you have to serve those different functions. Sometimes you just have to be like, I don't care. You have to show up a set on time and ready. You have to know your lines. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Be professional. And other times you have to go, it's okay. How can I help you? What do you need? 
I'm here for you. Let's come in early. Let's stay late. Let's run lines on our day off. Always program a day off every week if you can. If you're doing a 10-day shoot, you might have to do 10 days straight, but it might be really helpful to do five and one for two weeks. So everyone has that day. So you can sit down and do department meetings. You can go over your footage. You can do whatever you need to do before you come back for next week. So that's a little bit about those three different roles. Things I've learned as a coach, as a creator, as a climber. Some of the lessons I wanted to give people as an overview about the different aspects of production, the different roles that we're generally in, and different ways that we look at things, communicate both with other people and ourselves. So before we move on to some of the upcoming projects I have and some of the resources that I wanted to talk about and some of the special offers I have, does anyone have any thoughts or questions on any of that? Or else we're gonna go on. Yes? I have a question about pacing on set. Um, how do you pace yourself as, as the director and pace your actors and your so that people are not moving into states of exhaustion, but can keep their energy up through the whole day. What's your recommendation for that? That's a great question. This is something that is quite often missed. The, uh, one of the things that was so valuable for me going to film school in Australia is I did not come up in the Hollywood system. Everything I did in Australia was indie. I, all the like professional shoots were in LA. And it was really interesting, I told the story earlier of being on the YouTube project, where I was like, oh, <laughs> this is not how I like to work. Because this is not how they do it in Australia. I'm sure you've heard stories like in France or England. Uh, uh, I listened to the Kubrick Universe podcast, which if anyone's a fan of just filmmaking or Stanley Kubrick, that's an amazing podcast. And they interview all these people who worked on all his films. A lot of them are older now, but they talk about, especially shooting in Pinewood Studios in England, how the crew needed in the union contract, morning and afternoon tea breaks. Because it's part of the culture and they expect it. And when Hollywood people come over, they're like, what the fuck is this? You just had tea six hours ago. Well, yes, this is afternoon tea and we're having it. And they would walk off. And the Hollywood people were like, no, you're supposed to work until you can't. And then you're supposed to pick yourself off the floor somehow and just keep going. And that European and Australian as well, view is we're here having a great time and this is our job and we want to do our job well and we want to keep growing our experience and learning and we want to keep doing this and you know if you're a roofer and you work too hard you're going to fall off the roof and you hurt yourself and you can't roof anymore if you're doing production and you get burned out you're going to leave and not do production anymore so part of this is figuring out like i mentioned taking that day a lot of people do either a five and two or a six and one, something like that. If you're doing a long project, especially like a feature, and you say, okay, in every budget, you should have a contingency, 10%. That's just kind of standard. So how can I do that with my timing? And say, I'm gonna plan 10% into the day. A couple rules, and these are things I got as the AD experience. I was taught very early on, and this has always worked, always. Unless you're walking across the street, every single move is an hour minimum. It's not 30 minutes, it's not 20 minutes, it's not 45 minutes, it's 60 minutes. Now if everybody's ready early, great. You just got an extra 15 minutes that day. But if you plan 35 minutes and the sound person gets lost or the DP can't find parking or someone took the wrong exit, well now you're behind. So it's putting in those little things. It's about saying, how can I do everything all at once? So while the grips are moving all the lights, because you're reversing, you know, we shot this way, I always wanna shoot everything, that's the experience. Oh, we forgot to shoot, so now we have to tear down shooting this way to redo this way, now you just lost an hour. So it's taking those five minutes and saying, before we tear this down, I'm gonna go talk to the I have to translate in my head. We call it scripty in Australia. Continuity. Did we get everything? Let me go talk to DP and go through the shot list. Did we get everything? Let me just maybe scroll through the footage real quick. Did we get everything? It's better to take those five minutes and save a potential hour. 
And that's where you say, hey, while I'm reviewing this for five minutes, I'm going to crew take a quick break. I'm going to have the actors prep for the next thing. I'm going to have crafty food services. Uh, Everything is an E in Australia. Brecky is breakfast. Yeah. So uh, everybody's going to do something, even if what you're doing is taking a break. It's the concept of active nothingness. What are you doing? I'm doing nothing. Good job. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to lock people down and be like, Grips, camera crew, I need you to stand by. Don't do anything, just stand there. I'm gonna make some decisions, then I'll tell you what to do. I'm like, okay, I'm doing nothing. I can't leave, I, I can't let you leave because you might need to move stuff. But I can't have you move stuff because I might need you to keep where it is. So just don't do anything. That's when you take those five minutes to do stuff. In terms of like the day, things are always gonna take longer. Best thing to do, plan 10 hours of shooting in your 12 hour day and say, if you have a, a, a big crew or you're doing an actual like legit production, they call it last man, so I'll just use that. When the last man sits down to eat, 30 minutes. So somebody needs to be sitting there, we're waiting on so-and-so, everyone else is five minutes to their meal, doesn't matter, that 30 minutes doesn't start until the last person sits down. So again, if you plan a 30 minute lunch break, it might take an hour for that to happen because that last person gets their 30 minutes. So it's knowing some of that stuff, but it's also knowing where can I fit in. So this is a great way to do this, for instance. Reach out to film schools, Craigslist, whatever. Find people who are willing to be runners and PAs. Do the old, you know, copy meals credit. Those are the people who you can say, you're, I'm gonna call in the order, you're gonna go get it, and you're gonna wait in your car until I tell you to come on set. You're not just gonna walk in, you don't wanna do DoorDash, and they just knock on the door and they blow the take, because now you just lost time, and everybody's like, oh, the food's here. You know, now they're mentally checked out. You're wasting time. So you have to know those logistics. And again, be able to shift into, okay, I'm the director, but I'm the producer. How can I have this be smooth? And then you go, are you going to go again? They go, no. They go, okay. Do this next shot. As soon as you cut, cut I'm going to have so-and-so come in with the food. And then we're going to set it up while everybody breaks. And you go, great. You go, okay. And then you go, hey, we have one more, and then we're going to break. Don't say we're going to lunch, because everyone's going to think about lunch. <laughs> so we, and then we're going to break. And you go, great. They're going to put all their energy into this, because I know I'm going to break after this. So we can go hard. And then you go, that's lunch. And they go, lunch? I thought we were going to break. You are going to break. It's lunch break. And they go, oh, sweet. <laughs> now, unfortunately, the writer, director, producer, none of you get lunch. What you get to do is eat while you go over the morning and prep for the afternoon. That's another way to build time into the day. But what you have to do is make sure that you're getting those breaks at some point. One thing to know is, if I take five minutes every four hours, am I still going to function at the end of the day? If not, how can I take 10 minutes every two hours or whatever? That's where experience comes in. Oh, my last production almost killed me. I did a feature I lost like 12 pounds in three weeks. I was just like running on coffee and running. And I was like sick for a week afterwards. And I was like, oh, I can't afford to have every production cost me a week because I'm not physically able to do this. So I have to monitor how much coffee, I have to not forget to eat. I can't do 18 hour days, or if I do an 18 hour day, the next day can't be 18, 18 hours. So part of that is keeping your pulse on where you're at and where everyone else is at. Because again, you're the director. You're directing how the production is going, not just directing the film. So I threw a bunch of stuff out there. Hopefully some of that was helpful. Hey everyone, sorry to stop the show, but we have to pay some bills around here. And to do that, I wanted to point out a couple things I have on offer at my site, shaneborza.com. If you scroll down to my courses, you can see I have both a content creator live class and a DIY version. These teach you everything you need to know from a production standpoint so you can either get a writing project done, an audio project, or a film project. Doesn't matter, it works for everyone. If you scroll down, you can see some of my clients and some of the testimonials people have left telling you how helpful this has been for them. So I hope you check that out. You can also go to my shop and you can see 
all that I have on offer to include coaching programs, audio stuff like soundtracks, film production stuff. I have filmmaker bundles, all types of things you might need to help you get your art out into the world. As you can see, I also have a number of books. They are all on Apple Books. So you can go to my site and get them directly, or you can go to Apple Books, put my name in, and then you can see all the books there. They are easily downloadable and you can read them on an iPad or something like that. There are coaching books here. There are poetry and photo books here. And I'm very excited. I just updated my Film Notes workbook and Film Notes book. They are expanded and updated 2023 editions. So please check those out if you want some extra stuff to help teach you production. And now back to the show. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. So, uh, Radomir, if you can play the Papa Pine trailer, please. This is our upcoming project. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how hopefully you can all become involved. Hi everyone, this is Shane Borza. I'm an award-winning filmmaker and a lifelong rock climber. And I wanted to talk a little bit about an upcoming project called Papa Pine. Papa Pine is an actual tree up on a ledge in Yosemite on the porcelain wall, which is just to the right of Half Dome. Yosemite and Half Dome are, of course, world famous and well known. The Porcelain Wall is not so well known, but it's a very important project to me. I hope that in this little video, it can give you a little bit of information as well as get you excited about being part of it because I would love your support. This all started a few years ago when I applied to a Live Your Dream grant from the American Alpine Club, which is co-sponsored by the North Face. I won the grant. The initial idea for the grant was to go up on the direct northwest face of the porcelain wall and put in a bolt ladder to save Papa Pine. Right now, the third pitch, you can see here the tree Papa Pine itself, you must climb the tree by slinging it with webbing. This is not a popular route. It doesn't get done a lot. But in the few trip reports that I read, everyone was complaining, somebody needs to do something or this tree is gonna die. My proposal to the American Alpine Club was to hand drill a bolt ladder into the cliff so that people can climb the bolt ladder, which is a very standard practice on an aid wall, thus saving the tree because people no longer need to climb the tree. To complicate matters, this is going to be the hardest aid climb I've ever done. It's a remote wall, which takes almost a whole day just to get up to from the valley. So this is gonna be a 10 day project at least. It also requires me to get a lot of support, equipment, and money because we're making a documentary film about this project. As you can see here, I have won the Live Your Dream grant from the American Alpine Club. I have received all the bolts and drill bits I need from the ASCA, the American Safe Climbing Association. I got all the hangers from Metolius. I got some meals donated from Rec Pack. I've had Toki Tennis come on, both as a financial sponsor as well as providing some needed apparel. I am partnering with Yosemite Big Wall to handle all the logistics, borrow any other equipment I need, as well as get led up to the base of the mountain. I have people for post-production to help with the editing of the film and the mixing and all that. But we also need additional funds for food, gas, paying the volunteers for their food and gas, getting everybody all the equipment they need to safely get up to the base of the route and back down again. So this video is a request for support, an overview of the project, both the climb and the film, as well as just an announcement. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these images and I look forward to giving more updates as the months progress. 
we are planning on doing this climb this year. So please follow on all the socials. If you feel like donating, on the screen, you can see our GoFundMe campaign. We'd love to have you not only share it, but also contribute, even if it's $5. If you're interested in coming on as an associate producer for the film, that is a higher price point, but you get a lot more perks, including professional credits in the film industry, being invited to the premiere next year and all of that. As always, thank you for watching. If you're a climber, I hope you climb safe. If you're a creator, please share your work with me. I'd love to see what you're making more soon. So we're almost done. Thank you for your patience. I mentioned some special offers. So uh, a couple things. First, I'd love to have anybody that's interested in coming on board in any way, let me know. But you can also just go buy some of our books or movies or courses or something and all those sales will help us. All my books are, so I have 11 books. Some of them are coaching, some of them are on filmmaking, some are on fitness. All those are on my website, uh, just like the socials, everything's in my name, Shane Borza. So you can go to shaneborza.com. I do have 50% off everything in the shop for people through Miracle Makers, so the code is MM50 for Miracle Makers 50% off. So if you want to buy any books, great. If you want to buy, uh, I have stock footage bundles and um, I have audio bundles, 900 di different audio tracks. So you can fill in all the sound effects that you need. I have royalty free music. I have all kinds of production stuff. All that is 50% off till the end of the month. All my books are also on Apple Books. My filmmaking books only are on Kindle. I just got them up this week. So depending on what you want to do, they're all there. I do everything digital only, uh, A, because it's so much easier and faster for people to get stuff to do a digital download, but also as a climber and outdoor person, I don't want to waste paper. So unfortunately, there's no print on demand, but you can get the digital stuff. Uh, all our films, Climb On, El Cap Wedding, Turbines, all those are on demand. Turbines is on, I think it's on Amazon and Vimeo and a bunch of other uh, stream platforms worldwide. El Cap Wedding and Climb On are only through uh, Vimeo VOD. The big announcement is I have a content creator course specifically for filmmakers. It is a seminar, so it's one day, Saturday, October 14th from noon to six. I'm gonna be running this every quarter. So it's a one day event. You get six hours. Hopefully there'll be a bunch of other people there, not only for you to learn with, but also to partner with. One of the goals, of course, of going to an event like this is to find people to stay in touch with afterwards or to start collaborating with. So we're gonna do that same sort of thing virtually. Part of the course is you get six hours of on-demand video lessons where I talk about all the things I talked about today. Each thing has basically an hour class. You get a bunch of books. You get all the filmmaker things I just mentioned. So you get uh, stock footage, you get audio footage, or audio, uh, what am I trying to say? Audio tracks. Tracks, thank you. I was blanking. I'm looking at the screen of like what I'm trying to say next. Uh, you get all the royalty free music. You get all these bundles. So you have everything you need to either practice editing or fill in that missing file that you needed to bridge the scenes or the sound effects for the fight or the background of like blenders or cars or anything else that you need. All this stuff is in there. What I've gotten for the last couple of years of running this course, a lot of people said, all the lessons are really great and you tell us to get all this stuff, but we don't have all that stuff. So I spent the last two years getting all this stuff for you. It's normally $3,500, so you're getting $5,000 worth of value for $3,500, but there's a $1,000 off code for America Makers. So it's $2,500, you get all the books, all the on-demand courses, you get all the resources, and you get the six hour seminar. So I'm really hoping that the partnership with Miracle Makers will continue, that a lot of people from the community will come, and that you all get a lot of value on Saturday, October 14th. If you have any questions, please contact me. I have three filmmaking books. Film Notes, which is writing, directing, producing. It's more of like a textbook. And then the Film Notes workbook, which is paperwork, exercises, production checklists, 
Those are designed to go together, but you can just get one or the other. And I have a book called Content Creator, which is basically the content creator course in book format. Anyone who signs up for my mailing list and sends me a message through shaneborza.com, I'm gonna pick one person to win each of those books. And you're welcome to spread that. So if you wanna send that out to the mailing list, because I told Aaron I was gonna do a giveaway for the books. So that's a great way for me to get people on the mailing list, it's a great way for people to visit my site. So I'll give out one copy of each of those books. So please go sign up, send me a message, remind me, hey, I'm signing up because of the panel you did, and I will randomly pick one of those people to give one of those books to. So that's the end of the panel. We are gonna do a screening of one of my short films. So before I segue to that, any thoughts or questions on any of the things we talked about today? Production, roles, wellness, or the project? Yes, you with your hand up. Ooh. That was a great uh, little promo for Pop of Pine. Um, maybe another time we can talk with you, maybe Dale and I can talk with you about um, the process of getting grants and some of the sponsorship stuff. But particularly grants, is that something you have done a lot of? And I, I have not. And actually, I was just talking to a producer about maybe coming on for the project. Uh, one of the things that uh, we are talking about is doing the premiere of this here next year, or wherever Miracle Makers 2024 is going to be. So I encourage everyone to come back to Miracle Makers next year, bring new projects, and also see how you can support each other with other people's projects who are here because it's just going to enable all of us to come back next year and be like oh I have another project or I finished the project or the project I wanted to do that we talked about you can see it it's tomorrow because that's how we foster community any other thoughts before we roll the short okay Radomir if we can play how's the weather man in a moment I'm just going to introduce it so this is a very special project to me. Uh, quick backstory. So this is comparing and contrasting two different views from two different eras around basically uh, a radical fighting against or for what you believe in. When the capital attack happened a few years ago on January 6th, it immediately brought to mind the Weather Underground movement in the 60s and 70s, which most people have never heard of. And I fell down a deep rabbit hole around this and created, accidentally, a multimedia project. I have uh, an original album called How's the Weather Man, which is streaming in all the places, so please listen to it. Uh, I also have uh, the Lesbian Western El Cap Wedding soundtracks up, so follow me on Spotify, you can listen to all that stuff. But it started off as a slam piece. And I turned it into a short film. I also did a live performance of this with the Vegas City Opera. So now I have the film, I have the written piece, I have the soundtrack, and next year we're turning this into a hybrid feature. So we're gonna take the short film, we're gonna take the live performance, we're gonna make a documentary about performing it in a studio and putting all that together with some director commentary and backstory and all this. So it's this ongoing living multi-piece project and I encourage all of you to challenge yourselves to do that similarly and say what else could I do with what I already have how can I turn this short and develop it into a feature how can I take this st short story and turn it into a film how can I take behind the scenes footage and turn it into a web series you know whatever it might be this project taught me a lot and I'm really glad that Aaron was a fan and wanted me to play it so without further ado Radimir, if we can play How's the Weather Man? Hey everyone, what you're not seeing is the 15 minute short, How's the Weather Man? It is coming out next year, as I mentioned, as a feature, so please look for that. And feel free to contact me at shaneborza.com if you want some updates. But for now, back to the panel after the screening of the short. <laughs> So that's all I got. Thanks for coming to both the panel and the screening. Any final questions before we leave for the next block?
Hopefully I'll see you all at the next thing. Thanks so much. Talk to you. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the show, please click on the link below. You can also contact me at my website if you have any questions about filmmaking or anything else. Off to the side, you'll see a couple of my books, Film Notes and the Film Notes Workbook. I encourage you to check those out if you'd like to learn more about filmmaking. See you in the next episode. Scene one, Apple, take one.